Well, hey everybody. Yes, I look a little bit different, don't I? You're used to seeing the DeWalt jacket, but what's with this stuff? Is this somehow relating to the coronavirus? Nope, not at all. I uh, get regular notes that come in, uh, and between myself and Hans from Norway and Bill from Florida, we try to be a resource to people around the world in giving them answers that they're seeking as far as things relating to vintage sewing machines. And uh, I think we do a decent job of it. We try to be timely, we try to be uh, factual, we try to be informative. But a couple weeks ago, I saw a note come in and actually kind of left it a little bit because I didn't know if uh, Hans from Norway or Bill from Florida would want to jump in on it a little bit and provide some uh, advice to this individual that had this question. Well, they didn't jump on it. So finally, uh, just in the last couple of days, I started digging into this myself. I started researching the question online. I started looking at what people were writing about it. And as I looked at more and more of the content that was being propagated on the internet, I got frustrated and I got kind of got discouraged a little bit because it really seemed to be speculative. It seemed to be non-fact-based. It tried, they, they tried to make their opinions and ideas sound uh, credible and informative, but I could tell that they were, they were spitballing it. And so I thought, this is something that we do need to probably try to dig into. And we do need to try to probably not just find the facts for this individual that wrote us, and her name is Belinda, but we need to do it for others around the world because obviously if all of this stuff is being posted that is non-fact-based and is speculative, there's a lot of information that's being presented again and again and again and again. And what's the old saying? If you hear a lie enough times, you're going to accept it as fact. And that's not what we're about on this channel. On this channel, I know that Bill is committed to it. I know that Hans is committed to it. I know I'm committed to. If we get a question that comes in, we do our darndest to research it and to try to get those facts uh, as accurate as we can before we provide our response to that individual. And as I looked more and more into this topic that Belinda brought up, it was apparent that there were going to have to be additional resources that were brought into the mix of this to try to get that information. So by the time we responded back, or by the time we did a premiere similar, similar to this, revealing what we found, that it was going to be fact-based, it wasn't going to be opinion-based, it wasn't going to be speculative. So at this point you're saying, okay, great, awesome, that's fantastic. We know you're committed to that, Scott. We know that Bill and Hans are committed when, because we've gotten responses from them on some questions before about machines and other things, and they've always done an excellent job of digging, digging, digging to try to get us the facts. What the heck are you talking about, man? <laughs> First of all, I got to pull this mask down because I'm starting to feel like, ah! So kudos, uh, I have a healthcare background and I used to, you know, when I would go into different infectious settings where someone had, you know, different issues going on, we would, my nurses and I, we would put on a mask and we would go into that setting and then I was more accustomed to it. Uh, I'm not accustomed to it anymore. Unless I'm doing grinding or some other things that produce a lot of dust, then I'll put on one of these masks and try to protect myself, but it's it's not it's not commonplace anymore. So, ah. so uh, at any rate, let me get to the question that uh, Belinda posed, and I'll put my specs on so I don't misread anything. So Belinda wrote the following. She says, "Hi Scott, love your videos and your Phoenix mission statement. You're a poet." Well, maybe I'm a poet and I don't know it, but thank you for that comment anyway, Belinda. That's very kind. Just wanted to ask you about asbestos in old Singer machines. It's a pet hate of mine. I think she means a pet peeve of mine. And I appreciate you will probably not feel the same way, but you've opened a lot of motors, so you may know the answer. Do you ever see anything that could be asbestos in the shape of wedge insulators which separate the motor windings 
I once saw an old delivery note for Kilbawi factory for uh, amosite, which is brown asbestos, destined for motor armatures. My husband said they later, uh, wait, my husband said they later used mica, and now I guess they use plastics. Anyway, just wondered whether a surgeon like you would know, please. It would look like molded mica, not particularly fibrous, I guess. Is this an area of concern? Other places it might have been used as insulation and papers inside old wires, and I've seen pictures of cloth pieces and washers turning up in foot pedals. And washers turning up, wait, in foot pedals, under the carbon stacks or rheostats. What do you think? Thank you, Belinda. So. And you've seen that in one of the premieres that I posted where I show you how to take apart the Bakelite foot controller, uh, similar to this one, and we remove all those carbon discs, and they always do have like an insulating pad or something like that. You'll see that in the foot controllers, you'll see that in the motors, not just by Singer, but you'll see that by other manufacturers as well. Based on the research that I've done, again, as I dug through a lot of these articles, a lot of these posts that seem to be based on speculation, they're not based on fact, I don't have any immediate concerns about this. And again, when it comes to asbestos, asbestos is going to be one of those things, it's got to become airborne, you've got to ingest it in some way, uh, and in all likelihood when you're doing uh, even deep maintenance like I do on foot controllers and motors, as a rule, I'm not going to be kicking stuff up into the air. I'm not going to be licking my fingers unless I'm having some sort of a good lunch, and you never know. But uh, it's not going to be, even if it is present, it's not going to be a risk that I would consider to be a high risk, and it's not something that I would you know, dwell on or lose sleep over or that I would become apprehensive about as I'm looking at uh, continuing to do the work that I do. But that's my opinion. And again, on this channel, Hans from Norway, Bill from, uh, from uh, Florida, and myself are committed to being fact finders. Uh, if any of you have sent questions in before and either Hans or Bill or myself have responded, you'll see right away that we don't spitball it. We try to dig into the question as best as we can, and we try to provide you the best, most accurate answers that we possibly can. That's the responsible thing to do, which is so something that I didn't see a lot of as I was looking at all of the posts uh, about this potential topic of asbestos uh, in vintage machines, whether it's foot controllers, whether it's motors, whatever it is. So I think that I think we need to be fact finders. I think we need to be responsible when it comes to uh, posts like that and posting information that is as accurate as it possibly can be, not speculation and, and not, you know, guesses or assumptions that are, that are, that are going to stir a lot of apprehension in people and it's not going to be fact-based. So as I looked at it and I thought, okay, I, as Belinda alluded to, my surgical approach to machines, uh, I dig into machines, I take motors apart, I, I service deep and far into machines and I've seen those uh, those uh, insulating pads and uh, those buffers that they put in the motors and in the foot controls numerous time and uh, I'll be honest with you from what I've been able to determine because I've even separated some of them because they they basically wear down and uh, and a lot of these are found in the metal foot controllers as well uh, similar to this and similar to this one that's used with the uh, Singer uh, 192K, the Spartan. And you'll find those insulating pads in these. Uh, they're designed to retard heat. Because whenever you're dealing with anything within that electrical field, uh, you've got to do something to manage that heat issue. Uh, so these pads that I've looked at have, have appeared to be uh, paper and or paper slash cloth based and don't appear to have anything at all to do with asbestos. But, again, being fact-based, I decided that I would take an extra step, a step that will cost me almost $100. So, any of you that attend premieres, you'll notice at the bottom of the chat section, there's emojis, special emojis that you can pick 
and you can select those and you can incorporate them into your posts when you're involved in the chat and I get a portion of those proceeds so if you want to help offset my investment to try to find this asbestos question that's going to benefit all of us then when you're in those chats choose some of those emojis and I'll get some of those proceeds and then I can use that to offset my uh, cost in trying to research this question that Belinda has raised for us uh, and certainly you can always send um, you know donations a small donation to the workshop you can send them to me through PayPal uh, there's a number of ways to do that to offset my cost in this respect because I think it's worth investing in and if you're willing to share that expense I think that would be fabulous so poke poke hint hint <laughs> so what did I do what did I do beyond looking on my smartphone and digging through all of these articles and posts uh, to try to see if I could find anything factual out there. Well, I started searching companies that specialize in asbestos um, testing. And this particular company that is called EMSL, uh, Testing Laboratories, and they're based in New Jersey. Let me kind of bring it up here so you can see it closer up to the camera. They're based in New Jersey, and I wrote them a note uh, through their website, and I explain what I was looking to do, and the fact that I was uh, uh, a person that restored and rebuilt and repaired a lot of vintage machines, kind of like these Husqvarna Viking 19E specials behind me, which also within those motor housings, and uh, even within some of the foot controllers with some of the vintage models, I found those same insulating pads as well that are de designed to retard and absorb heat. So it's not just a Singer question, uh, as Belinda alluded to with her Kabawi Scotland uh, statement about seeing a paper or something. And I, I don't know what that's about uh, because, again, all of the research I did, I didn't find any factual evidence to suggest that Singer or any of the other major manufacturers used asbestos uh, in vintage sewing machines. But uh, whatever document she's referring to, I would love to see a copy of it, and maybe she can send it to me through Messenger, and then I can share it with all of you if there was something evidential uh, that implied that they were using some sort of a brown asbestos uh, in some applications in the Kabawi factory. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they may have used asbestos in the, the, the building of the structures uh, way back then and maybe some of the other material builds that they did but I didn't I haven't found anything yet to suggest that they used it in the actual production and any of you that are faithful followers you saw that video that I shared where we took a tour of the Kibawi Scotland factory and uh, they, they didn't they didn't hold anything back I mean they showed us um, very very close up and personal uh, processes of them doing everything from building the arms to the molding process to the motor process and the wraps and everything and the, the filigree and the decal work that they did. We saw a lot in that hour and a half video of our tour and there was never ever anything where you saw where they had materials that appeared to be asbestos based. So I'm just saying my gut feeling right now is that this is something that I'm not concerned about. But nonetheless, with uh, Hans from Norway, Bill from uh, Florida, and myself being fact-based uh, vintage sewing machine experts, I wanted to go an extra step. So that's why I contacted these folks, and they sent me a test kit that I'm going to use to swab those pads that Belinda referred to, the inside of the motors of any of the vintage motors that I have in my uh, my inventory which are quite a few and uh, certainly you know foot controllers motors all those different things that are potential areas of concern so that we can get them then to uh, take these test results and to evaluate for us empirically not based on assumption not based on speculation but based on empirical testing whether or not there's any trace evidence of any asbestos in the samples that we send in. And again, the foot controllers that I have on the table right here behind me are only a small sampling of the foot controllers that uh, were used by the different manufacturers over time. Most of these are going to be 
foot controllers that were used specifically by Singer. And if you have input on additional things that you would like me to test, if I have access to them, then type that into the chat along with a special emoji because this is going to cost me a hundred bucks to do this. Uh, and uh, give me your input and I will try to incorporate that into our empirical testing so that these folks out in New, uh, New Jersey can test the samples that I send in and they can report back to me what they found. Now if they find trace evidence of uh, asbestos, then at least we know. If they find no evidence after I swab all of these insulating pads and the inside of motors and near the carbon uh, discs and everything and the uh, Bakelite foot controls and everything else and they come back with pff, nothing, negative, then I'm going to seek your help in getting that out there on every platform that we possibly can so we can begin the process of educating people and dispelling all of the fear-mongering and all of the uh, misinformation right now that I believe is being propagated about this very issue. Does that make sense? So I've never done one of these kits before, uh, but it says uh, easy to follow instructions, postage paid envelope. You know what? They can pay for the stamp when they're charging us almost a hundred bucks to send in these swabs for them to test it. And God knows it probably with their laboratory resources, it probably only takes them 10 minutes. So a hundred bucks in 10 minutes, you do the math. That's like $600 an hour that they're making uh, potentially uh, through testing like this. But you know what? All said and done, it's worth the investment to me because I, wanna, I want this YouTube channel to be fact-based and I want us to be on a mission to educate people. And uh, I think that this is a great step in that direction. So I'm glad that Belinda did send in the uh, information, uh, the question. And again, B Belinda, if you have that copy of that receipt or that uh, whatever it was relating to Kabawi where they were referencing brown asbestos, I would love to get a copy of that. And I'll post it on Facebook and I'll invite folks to dig into it with us uh, as we try to put our arms around this potential issue. As soon as I came on camera with the mask and the gloves, you probably thought right away, okay, the hazard is somehow relating to uh, the coronavirus. Well, now you've found that there are other potential hazards that we have to also consider in our space. So let me zoom into these foot controls real quick. I'll show you the ones that I'm going to be testing. And then you can, again, type in the chat or send me a note through Messenger as to whether or not there's other things that you'd like me to potentially uh, look at. So these are obviously some of the original Bakelite type foot controllers here you can see. Uh, the one controller right there that I'm kind of zoomed in right now uh, is the one that's commonly used with the 192K, the Spartan. Uh, some of these other foot controllers were mounted into tables uh, and were used, like this one on the, the left there, uh, that was used also as a knee controller. And, uh, and then this is one of the real, real old ones uh, that was also used in some of the original machines that went into tables. Uh, that were electrified. And then we've got the good old clamshell that Singer used quite a bit with a variety of different machines as well. And my goal is to see if I can uh, get swabs of those. I also have an old style uh, Singer motor back here that I'm going to see if I can crack that open and swab um, you know, anything at all that potentially could have uh, trace elements of asbestos in them. And then uh, again send that in uh, with the testing kit to these folks in New Jersey and see what they find. You know, again, I don't have any concerns. Uh, and even, let me put it this way, and when you're doing, dealing with particulate, you're dealing with particulate amounts, you know, whether it's these foot controllers or whether it's that, uh, that vintage motor. And again, I've seen those insulating pads, not just in Singers, but I've seen it in a, in a wide variety of other machines that I've serviced and restored in this workshop. So uh, that was a common thing that uh, manufacturers would do to, to try to cope and mitigate the heat factor that would be generated from foot controls and motors. And they had to put some sort of a buffer in there and these pads were oftentimes used. So, uh, but if you have other ideas, let me know because I wanna try to make this a comprehensive uh, collaborative approach 
uh, with all of us working together and putting our heads together and saying, yeah, let's, let's get a test of this or can we get a test of that? And again, I don't know what limitations this kit is going to have, how many swabs they're going to let me use, you know, uh, how many swabs are included in the kit. I hope they gave me quite a few of them for 100 bucks, but I don't know that for a fact. So I'll do my very best to try to get this uh, process going. And then, obviously, I'll do a follow-up premiere uh, sharing the results that these folks from New Jersey have sent me back uh, once we collect the evidence and once we pay our $100 fee. And then they've gotten back to me with, what did they find? And then we'll know one way or another. Um, and again, I'll be honest with you, even if there were trace elements of asbestos in any of the things that you see sitting on the workbench right now, it wouldn't cause me personally a huge amount of trepidation because asbestos is one of those things it's got to it's got to find a way of getting into the air getting onto your skin uh getting into your system uh and generally in fairly significant amounts and when you're talking about the you know even if there were asbestos trace amounts in uh motors or foot controllers I quite honestly, as long as I've been doing this for almost two decades, uh, I've never had any adverse effect uh, from a health standpoint uh, in doing the work that I do. So for me, it's not a big deal, but I work for all of you. And I know that Bill and Hans feel the same way. We want to be resources to you. We want to be fact finders. And so we're going to take this additional step uh, so that we can conclusively and empirically come up with the answers that a lot of people are seeking about this issue of asbestos uh, in vintage sewing machines. So there you got it. I'm on a mission uh, and I you know I think I think we'll we'll be better off whatever results we end up getting from this. So stay tuned and yes, Dr. Singer will obviously evaluate whatever results they send to me, to help me interpret it, to make sure that we're going to provide some accurate, clear answers to all of you uh, once that information comes back. In the meantime, let me encourage all of you, I'm going to come out of my shot just a little bit here. Let me encourage all of you uh, to stay safe, I put my little mask back on, uh, to stay safe, and I know as I've been out and about, uh, I've seen a number of folks, uh, primarily elderly, that are wearing masks like these when they're out in a setting where they might have incidental contact with people, and that social distancing might be more of a challenge. So, uh, you know, again, I, I want you to relax, uh, but be vigilant. Uh, as we uh, combat this coronavirus. And, uh, you know, I always say there's a saying within the circles of faith where we're all going to find ourselves in a storm sometimes. Uh, we're going to find ourselves in a storm of fear, misinformation, whatever it is. But the storm doesn't have to enter us. So I think that's the distinction that I would challenge you with, implore you with, encourage you with, is we're all in the storm right now with what's going on with this coronavirus, but don't let the storm get inside of you and eat you up. Uh, take basic precautions, be smart, you know, follow the guidelines that the CDC and other folks are giving out there, but relax, relax. You know, it's just like this potential threat of asbestos. It's not going to change my routine. It's not going to change the way I do business. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have absolute confidence in what I do and how I do it. And uh, But at the same time, we're going to get to the bottom of this, and then we'll share that information with your help all over the world to let them know what we found. Because I'm not aware of anyone else having taken this step, probably because as soon as they found out, it's going to cost me 100 bucks. They were like, ah, that's okay. I'm just going to speculate. I'm going to make assumptions. I'm going to post things that might be unfounded, but they're going to sound really smart. And we'll just leave it at that, and then people will have to wonder. Well, we're not about that on this channel. We're, on the, we're about fact-finding in this channel. We're about fact-sharing, uh, and that's 
the steps that we're going to take uh, with that. But since I've got it right here, and I literally just got this in the mail today, let me read to you because uh, um, I get some of my basic healthcare stuff done uh, through Bell and Health. And if any of you are familiar, familiar with Bell and Health, uh, they're a very good organization. They do some real good stuff. And uh, they sent me this little thing that says, here is what Bell and Health wants you to know and do about uh, uh, coronavirus. So they, they start out by saying, uh, about the um, C. Div 19 coronavirus, it's a variation of the common cold virus. And the way to combat it involves the same tactics as preventing a cold. What is different is there's no natural human immunity. Early reports suggest that 80% of all cases are mild. 80% of all cases are mild. It is spread via contaminated surfaces and close physical contact with an infected person via, via droplets. Uh, people who are at greater risk for, and then they go into the risk groups, obviously over 60, et cetera, and that. But notice it's, it's, it's done through droplets. Now that could be sneezing, coughing, uh, you know, the stuff on the surface or whatever. But the point is, you know, if you, as I oftentimes do, as I'm in and out of post offices and stuff, if you have incidental brushing of elbow with somebody, you're not likely to pick it up. So that part, again, is the fact-finding where I think Bellin has done a good job of try to, trying to zero in on what we should be doing, but at the same time not saying, oh, my God, you know, if, if someone, someone looks at you and blinks twice, those droplets are going to shoot out of their eye and go across the room and stick to you, and then all of a sudden you're going to be infected. Um, that's just silly, obviously. Um, let's see, what else do they write? And then they have some recommendations. Postpone visiting someone who is at risk. Uh, the elderly, someone known to be ill. You know, FaceTime them. Do other things like that where you can still have that contact with them without, um, you know, being in the room in proximity to them. Use household cleaning products to wash frequently touched objects like doorknobs, light switches, desks, keyboards, etc. Um, and then it goes into take action. Call your doctor's office or conduct an e-visit or video visit if you are in a high-risk category with symptoms or you have known close exposure to someone affected by the virus. Symptoms include fever above 100.4, cough, shortness of breath, short, sore throat in some cases, uh, and then it recommends other things that you can do to kind of uh, cope with um, the discomfort of symptoms, whether they're corona or whether they're uh, a strain of flu. So, but I, I like information like this when they share it uh, because it helps us to zero in on what's fact versus what's fiction. Because there is obviously quite a bit of fiction being circulated out there right now, whether it's about coronavirus or whether it's about potential asbestos and vintage sewing machine components. And uh, I think we're all, any of you that are spend a lot of time on this channel, you already have a passion and a love for fact-finding. So let's continue on that march, uh, you know, whether it's coronavirus or whether it's our current mission and quest to try to find, about, find out the answers about potential asbestos, trace amounts, and some of the old foot controllers and the motors. Okay? All right. Well, get back to work if you're at home. You're probably in your bunny slippers uh, in your house coat or something, which is fine. And um, I'm going to get back to work here in the workshop. A lot going on here, a lot to do. And again, all of you that are taking that bold step of boxing up your machines and getting them to the workshop where I can make a difference for you, thank you. Uh, I've been real busy, and I'm very thankful for that. So God bless. Stay tuned for other videos like this where hopefully I won't be wearing blue gloves or I won't be trying to talk to you through a mask, okay? <laughs>